Hello my bungled and botched friends, Richard Lewis here, uh, and I'm back, I'm back from Serbia, I've been on the road for a ridiculously long time, I've crammed in so many events, I am absolutely burnt out, but I'm also absolutely delighted to say that uh, I've got two and a half weeks now of just this, just being decompressed in front of my desk where I love to be recording content. Uh, for you guys, which I love to do. So, I've now got time to catch up on the ever wacky and increasingly politicized world of esports. And today's video will be about the situation that occurred while I was on the road, and that was the G2A.com sponsorship uh, battle with Riot Games. Now, to give you a brief summary of this, what happened was G2A.com, who sponsor a bunch of esports teams, and I mean a bunch, uh, I can think of like Cloud9, Virtus Pro. Uh, team property, I mean, I'm missing loads out, but you get the picture. Uh, Riot have said during their World Championship Finals that teams need to remove the G2A logo from their jerseys and from anything else that might be associated with the broadcast while they consider a permanent ban of uh, the sponsor in their league. Now, for those of you that don't know uh, what G2A is, or who they are. I'll give you a very brief uh, summary. Uh, they are a, a serial key reseller, effectively. So what they do is they operate in what I refer to as the grey market. Uh, what they're doing isn't illegal, but a lot of people in the industry consider it to be unethical or leveraging a system that there isn't any particular infrastructure to, to, to combat so for example one of the ways they make their money is they go to regions where re retail keys for games are sold at a specific price based on the economy of scale for that region they take those keys which they buy in bulk they sell them in a region where the recommended retail price is higher they moderately undercut that recommended retail price which is still bigger than what they paid for it because they bought it from an economically depressed region and that's how they make a profit, but also pass on savings to the consumer. And that's key here. It's not all bad what they're doing. They offer a, an effective and, and swift service, and they do save you money, which a lot of consumers uh, view as being the most important thing. So they have been involved in some scandals as well in the past. For example, uh, there have been retail keys that they've sold that have been sourced specifically to having been scammed out of uh, developers under the pretense of them being uh, YouTubers or games reviewers and what they've done is they've created emails that look similar to a known YouTuber or a no games reviewer email and they've asked for 50 keys or whatever and then they've sold them so they've obtained them um, in, in, a, in a deceptive fashion on top of that we've had some keys that simply um, don't work uh, because they've been, again, they've been acquired in a shady way, so a developer says, well, we're not going to honor those keys. There, there have been some problems. You can Google all of the um, issues. Um, but basically, there is a huge debate about what serial key resellers do for the industry. Now, in terms of what they've done for esports, they have undoubtedly been one of the bigger sponsors to enter the space. Uh, ultimately, before the fantasy draft market took off and started dumping millions into what we're doing here, uh, it was the uh, key resellers, and of course it was Kingwin and G2A.com that pretty much carved up the market. Now again, to give you an idea of the sponsorship deals we're talking about, it was heavily rumored that, they'd, that their sponsorship deal with Cloud9 was like a million dollar deal. Now I've done my own digging into this and my sources confirm that isn't true, but we are talking a sizable six-figure sponsorship deal for Cloud9 alone. So you can imagine the amount of money they put in overall in their esports marketing campaign. And I've never really understood it. I don't necessarily see where the synergistic nature of what esports is and, and, and buying cheap games comes in, other than that we're all gamers. But every uh, top-level um, team seems to have a key reseller sponsor, as I said, Kingwin or G2A. Now, as you'll know, if I, I broke the news that Kingwin were downsizing and were not paying out their sponsorship money and were looking to be on the way out. Interestingly enough, 
this is something that is also affecting G2A. If you go onto the internet, you will see the managers from Complexity saying G2A have been late with payments. There are rumours that this might be Rome burning. But that's a video for another time and no doubt a story for another time. So the key thing here is, okay, like everything, we need to be adult about this issue. Yes, it's fine to beat your chest and talk about how unethical and, and shady they are. But we've never had a problem, have we, in esports about unethical sponsorship deals. Uh, I seem to remember writing an article a few years ago saying we should have only ethical sponsors in esports. We should not support peripheral companies that use sweatshop, la sweatshop labor. We should not support companies like Papa Don's who, ha who treat their employees like garbage. I got laughed at and told I was being a naive realist. I think the matter of uh, serial key resellers, by contrast, is uh, you know small small potatoes, in my opinion. So let's let's look at it with uh, you know some some sort of broader context, and that is that whatever you think about G two A, and with the few incidents of illegality, they're exploiting a system for their own uh, financial gain. And that is pretty much the nature of capitalism and, and all capitalist businesses. So they've done a lot for esports in terms of the money that they've put in. Now, this is probably what you're thinking. Here we go. Richard's going to attack Riot because that's what he does. It's like Jim Sterling and Konami. But it's not. That's not going to be what happens in this video. Because here's the thing. The... Riot Games ban is predicated on the fact that G2A.com have several pages where they offer services for ELO boosting or account purchasing. Now, first off, ELO boosting, again, for those that don't know, because I get all sorts of people coming to my channel these days, ELO boosting is where you get somebody that's better than you to play on your League of Legends account. And again, it applies to multiple games. It's not a League of Legends exclusive problem. And they boost you to a level that is not commensurate to your skill. The reason this is desirable, other than bragging rights status and the fact that Riot give out seasonal rewards if you achieve a certain uh, rank, the other reason is that everybody labors under this delusion that once you get out of bronze, silver, gold, whatever it is, you enter into this utopia where no one acts like a retard. Demonstrably not true. It happens at all levels of the game. Even pros have to deal with retards and trolls in the upper echelons of masters or whatever. Yet we've created this fictitious narrative that uh, we, can get, we can escape the retards. You will never escape retards in a game the size of a League of Legends, especially one that's free to play. Never going to happen. You've just got to suck it up and deal with the retards. Sad, but true. On top of that, uh, the account purchasing is pretty much predicated on Riot's own failure to address the fact that they've been around for six years, uh, in excess of six years now. Um, and still, people who want to create Smurf accounts, alternate accounts, people who have fallen foul to one of their ridiculous bands, they have to uh, rank up again, which is going to take you about 160 to 180 wins. And now in the current meta in the game, as it is, where snowballing has been stamped out of the game, and instead every game is won by some awful, slow, attritional slog, so it's 40, 50 minutes a time, that's too much to dump into just getting your account to a stage where it can play ranked. Plus, you've still got fundamental things in the game that you need to unlock, like runes, masteries, all that bollocks, things that just shouldn't be in the game. So, this is uh, an, an ongoing issue, but obviously account selling is against Riot's terms of service. It's their game, it's their product, they get to call the tune. So, I'm not going to turn on Riot Games. You absolutely cannot have sponsors being advertised in your league, one of the leagues and esports events that has some of the biggest global reach, when it contradicts your core values. You cannot allow this. It would make you look ridiculous as a company. It would be used against you every time you try to take a stance on anything. But, again, the issue has a bit more nuance to it than that. And, and this is the problem. By putting this ban in place, Riot are impacting on the ecosystem outside of their control. And they're impacting directly on the businesses, the team organizations that contribute to their league and make it great. Which is why a compromise absolutely needed to be reached, I believe, for this to be a satisfactory resolution. Now, of course, when the story broke, 
in the Daily Dot. Yes, that's the Daily Dot, the only publication doing real journalism in esports still to this day. And my young Padawan Jacob Wolf broke the story, but I hang on, I thought he was a bad journalist. Yeah, whatever, okay. Well, there'll be a video about that, by the way. So yes, I, I get to do my what is it, my biannual dip into uh, esports journalism and why everyone treats journalists like shit in an upcoming video. You can enjoy that. But uh, Riot Games are currently talking about banning the G2A sponsor entirely. Now, this is where it gets complicated. The big issue here is Riot Games have done a lot to stop organizations actually being able to exploit revenue streams. If you look at an LCS contract, for example, it says in there you cannot have sponsors that operate outside of what Riot deem as moral, and this typically means tobacco, firearms, alcohol, pornography, uh, and uh, gambling, which for me is a list of pretty much all of the best things in life. So with that problem comes that, for example, the fantasy draft money, which has been deemed to constitute gambling uh, by Riot Games, uh, th th that revenue stream has been denied to the LCS teams. They're not allowed to fully leverage it. They're not allowed to um, use it in, in and have that logo in the league. And this impacts on how much money they can realistically charge to be a partner. And it's the same with G2A.com. G2A.com, as we've established, are dumping lots of money into this uh, league. And now because of a relatively small issue in the sense that this is one or two pages now they're going to have the, they're going to have the perfect excuse to cut back on their investment in those team organizations and where can those team or where, where can those team organizations go to get more money to replace that they're being hampered and as we're moving towards a level of professionalism in esports where players are going to demand higher salaries and, and you've got to attend more events and Obviously, expenditures going up in line with sponsorship. This stance by Riot is going to reduce the total income and overheads are still going to increase. So this is where, it, this is where it's a very subtle issue because what the one thing I haven't seen anybody talk about is how Riot's uh, kind of blanket ban on certain types of sponsor prevents money coming in and now they're doing something like this. This has the potential to be dangerous. Now, where it gets more interesting is uh, G2A.com uh, to uh, kind of push back on what Riot Games had said uh, publicly. They released a press release, and it's one of the most hilarious pieces of propaganda I've read. I, I, I thought NIP with their Heaton piece had really gone beyond fascist levels of propaganda. Like, nope. Turns out G2A uh, can uh, trump them. Well, who knew? So they put a statement out here, and it was entitled, G2A Battles Riot for Esports Rights to Grow. Um, and they released this to several uh, media outlets. And there are some interesting details in this beyond the obvious hilarity of their, them trying to frame themselves as these huge esports enthusiasts simply because they dumped a bunch of money into it because it was a space they could have complete domination over for a relatively cheap price. So it says G2A has invested over $6 million in esports sponsorship deals since 2014, uh, which is a, a number I don't doubt. I actually would have thought it might have been a little bit higher. But it said they received an email from the Riot Developer Relations Manager in the U.S. An email brought news that has the ability to impact negatively on esporters, especially during this fabulous time when hopes are so high for great esports event. Uh, the email came after G2A tried many friendly ways to meet with Riot to work uh, with them so as not to spoil things for esporters to find a win-win solution. We tried to give them what they wanted. We suspended account selling and ELO boosting of accounts, but there were only more and more demands from Riot. No positive answer to several propositions of how to empower the esports industry together in favor of gamers. Riot even asked G2A to remove helpful tools for players such as game guides. Now, let's talk about this. 
this to me is is classic riot actually as soon as you enter into a dialogue with riot and you show any weakness or willingness to be flexible they have a long standing history of leveraging that leveraging that weakness and asking for more and more if you want evidence of this you only have to look at how they reached out to all of the tournament organizers dream hatch mlgs uh, people like this and said hey help us get global events going on uh, help us really push esport uh, the, the esports side of league of legends we'll give you prize money we'll give you everything you need to do it now, all we want is the following don't have dota 2 on at these events don't have anything we deem a competitive game we want certain types of coverage oh we want to tell you which staff uh, you use for these events on the broadcasting team but other than that it'll be pretty lucrative as long as we get 95 percent control over the final product then of course they turned around to all of the tournament organizers that had helped grow their product and said fuck you if you want to run esports events now with league of legends uh, you can have lcs games on a road tour they can play it's lcs games that play at your event but be under no illusion it'll be us it'll be riot games lcs of course, most tournament organizers were like, well, that kind of sucks for us because we don't get to put any kind of sponsors or branding on it or anything like that. Uh, we have less control. It's not a tournament. There's no storyline. There's no narrative. It's just a furtherance of your own brand and product. And, of course, they started pulling out of it. Um, and that's what Riot do. That's what they do. There's a million examples. One day I will collate them all for you, but you can just go through my channel if you really want and find them. Anyway, so I believe that. I do believe that. I honestly think G2A said, yeah, all right then. It's definitely worth more to us to just close down these ELO boosting uh, pages that we have and, and account selling. But they haven't qualified in this ridiculous press release what those extra demands are. Now, I've been working on a story while this has been going on, uh, and it'll be out soon. It, it's particularly well sourced. I spoke to several team owners who obviously want to remain anonymous uh, because of riots antics and they've told me that one of the things riot are currently doing is they have this big revision and restructuring of the league which they've already said in public we're thinking about new new ideas and new ways to approach it they want to bring in big sponsors different types of sponsors sponsors are going to put a lot of money in the league directly and this will cover the stipend they pay lcs teams and they will be increasing that stipend and potentially even paying a stipend to challenger series teams now this, of course, would give them a much greater degree of financial control. Being in the LCS would be a much more desirable uh, proposition than it is at the moment. And it's organizations like G2A that have dumped millions and millions of dollars into these, uh, into these teams that ultimately give those teams a degree of independence, a degree of uh, financial control of, of, of their own. Now, obviously, it's hugely important for the sponsors to, that they're in LCS. But we know for a fact that CS goes on the increase. It's now the most viewed game. It's set the highest uh, viewing numbers. And apart from one or two high points last season, viewing numbers do seem to have plateaued a little bit for the LCS. And I feel all of this together has created uh, an issue where the bigger sponsors, Riot, are looking at them and thinking, how long is it going to be before teams start pushing back on us because the stipend is actually quite a small amount of their income and they're making so much money that maybe they don't come into LCS anymore. Maybe these brands, these organizers decide that well, we, we actually don't need this. We need to make a stand and we can make more money operating outside of the league if we pick our sponsors and partners uh, carefully and cleverly. So... There is an element to this where I'm a little bit confused because why is it now of all times that Riot Games have decided this uh, this ELO boosting and account selling on G2A is a problem? It's been there for a while. It, it's been a service on, on that page for many, many months and it's only now it seems to be an issue while all of these behind the scenes discussions are taking place. And I don't want to suggest that Riot do everything um, to serve their own agenda and as part of some sort of overarch uh, overarching plot for global domination. But actually, the more and more reporting w we, we've seen does chip away at that facade, that veneer of them trying to be, hey, we're like all about the community, man. We're all about you know, esports. So I do have some concerns about the timing of this and what it all might mean in, in a bigger picture. So obviously more on that. 
as, as we break it. But the main point I want to end the video on is this. We shouldn't get locked into that binary thinking, which we do in esports quite a lot. We shouldn't pick uh, a side just blindly, like Riot versus G2A. And I did see, obviously, in the subreddit, where the community just seemed to be fairly much brainwashed into believing that Riot Games would never do anything um, bad for the, the, the esports ecosystem or bad for their own player base. Demonstrably not true, but why let the facts get in the way of anything? Uh, they seem to be overwhelming while well, G2A are a scummy company. Now, be that as it may, and that might be true, and I've known many people on ethical grounds refuse to take G2A's money. We've also got to say that there is a, a, a requirement now for organizations to need to be able to get that sort of revenue stream. Riot have limited revenue streams for these organizations and with overheads going up as more and more uh, people are crying for players to have better salaries, better conditions and overheads going up because you need to go to more events and it's becoming more of a global thing. If one, And that should lead to bigger sponsorship. But if one company, one of the big players in the industry is saying, well, you can't be partnering with these guys, these guys, these guys, these guys and these guys, and those guys just happen to be all of the guys that want to invest in esports, that's a problem. That's a problem for everybody. So it's a, it's a subtle issue. It's not as black and white as people are making out. That said, absolutely want to underline the point that Riot Games are right to not have any sponsors that don't synergize with their own va values. It makes sense. You know, we, the reason we don't want tobacco companies um, advertising on football leagues, for example, is because, first of all, it's athleticism. You're not meant to be out there, you know, wrecking 40 a day. Fuck it, I believe it's personal choice, but, you know, this, this is the theory. Smoking's bad and gay, right? So we don't want kids doing it. Well, Wayne Rooney can smoke 40 fags a day. Yeah, he also has sex with dinner ladies. You know, maybe don't do everything Wayne Rooney does. But anyway, whatever whatever the point is that it's, it's up to you who you take the money from. It's up to you... You know who who uh, who whose brands you put on your platform. Riot have built a huge platform for sponsors to have reach and, and attention in a way that hasn't existed before. So it's only fair they get to choose who gets a piece of that pie. And equally, it's ridiculous of G2A to try try and frame themselves as e-sporters to try and rally us, the community, to champion their cause. Let's be clear. They came into esports when it was already in a record growth period, when the golden age was already around the corner. They came in and started sponsoring teams in 2014. We were already well on our way. So they only came in and started sponsoring teams because it served their ends. It was a marketplace that they could have wrapped up for a relatively cheap investment. They are not esporters. And if you want to be honest about it, the net good that Riot Games have done for esports in comparison to G2A, it's a hundredfold and yes I almost choked saying that but it's the truth it's the facts so I hope that Riot aren't doing this as part of some sort of again plot to bring the, the teams to heel a little bit in terms of the runaway sponsorships that they're getting in terms of the big money that they're getting in terms of making them more dependent on that stipend I think that would be really unfortunate but again Whatever the reasons, they're well within their right to do it. And G2A, I don't know. I, they, I, as I said, I've heard they're already late paying people. I've heard they've got problems on the horizon. It almost could, could be a, a, a moot debate very soon if they go the same way as King win. Um, so the final thought is just that Riot... I hope do care about the ecosystem. I hope they do care about these organizations. These organizations, these brands, have helped their success along the way. It has been a, a symbiotic relationship, um, and they need to respect that because there will be a time when League of Legends isn't the isn't the game. We're already seeing CS:GO overtaken, as I said. Uh, there will be a time when maybe Riot Games don't want to invest any money anymore into their esports di uh, division. They will go, They will, like all great things, that will end. But esports will remain. And the, they could do a lot of damage between now and then if they don't think about the bigger picture, which I certainly hope they would. Anyway, I will bring you guys more in this story as I have it myself. I will let you know on Twitter when the report is out. And until then, as always, thanks for watching. See you soon.